Hello, it's Scott Manley here, uh, doing something slightly different. Uh, I'm Now, many people have commented on my game skills, and to be honest, I'm actually really rubbish at all this stuff, but I kind of want to show you that it is actually possible to fly into space blindfolded. I'm not going to do it blindfolded because that doesn't make really for a great video, but I mean, uh, I am going to do it completely blind. Right? Uh, it's all to do with knowing the timing of what I have planned. So if you can see in the video there, uh, that is a stock Kerbal X. And of course, I'm recording that. You can see the little, uh, in the top right corner, there's a little red number that shows that I am recording. Now, there are no other displays or anything around here. This is just the monitors. Uh, Nothing going on, right? So nothing that I can use to, uh, you know, display this information on. Nothing on the ceiling, nothing on the ground, just my keyboard, a very messy desk, which I probably should tidy. Uh, I'm entirely going to be reliant on this. And of course, let's uh, do the proper thing. Let's first of all hide this. Let's hide the UI. And for extra special effect, let's actually Actually, you know what? Let's let's leave this out so you guys can see. I was going to hide everything, but you know what? You're going to see that in the video. So we're going to set this here, and most importantly, we're going to turn off these screens. Right? Screen off. Screen off. And now I am blind, right? I have nothing but my wits. Oh, yes. A watch. No, I'm, uh, the watch would give me uh, time information. So I am going to put that, put that right here face down so that I can't use that for my timing. So I'm completely blind, I'm gonna use my internal clock, that the skills of my, my DJ skills are gonna keep a perfect, you know, 60 BPM tick going in my head. Throttling up, pressing T, and are we ready? Go! There we go, now we're listening for the all important engine cutout sounds. Now when the engines cut out, we're gonna to have to stage. And uh, you can see the keyboard here. Hopefully you'll be able to see that I'm actually hitting the keys in question. There's the first engines out. Uh, I should probably be talking during this because otherwise I, I might miss something. It's very important that I don't miss these external boosters cutting out. Obviously, if... Uh, oh, there's another one. If uh, I stage prematurely, I'll pretty much destroy my uh, spacecraft. So that will be equally bad if I don't miss it. Now, the launch plan is more or less going straight up, and then once we get high enough, we will turn ourselves over 90 degrees. Again, entirely blind. There's the last one. So now we're going straight up. This will take a while. This will take a couple of minutes. I think we've been flying for about one minute, uh, based on my timing. Uh, but when the engines cut out, that will be the kind of point at which I start timing things, because that will provide a, a calibration point for my counting. I'm counting this in my head, you know? Uh, it's like uh, 1 minute 15 now, right? That's just me more or less counting in my head. Ah, oh dear, this is, this is kind of stressful. So, okay, so we're flying mostly with ASAS on. Once we get above the atmosphere and my engine cut out, cuts out, that's when the most critical maneuver happens because what we're going to have to do is rotate the whole spacecraft 90 degrees and it doesn't matter which direction but I'm going to go to the right. We are going to have to then figure out when we reach apoapse or as close to apoapse as it doesn't matter. And then of course we're going to have to use that upper stage to get ourselves into orbit. And you know what? It'd be really nice if we actually had enough fuel left to get back but we don't know how long that will be. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of feeling that this is uh, very similar to the plan that they had for the Lunar Escape System. That was the, the thing I described in Real World Kerbal Space Program, where the launch profile was essentially a series of checklists to rotate the vehicle to a certain amount and uh, fire the engine at a certain throttle. Uh, and so you would have one guy flying and the other guy calling... Oh, there we go. Okay, so that is like one, 2 minutes 35. Okay, so we're in orbit, or we're in space above the atmosphere, and this is the important maneuver. Now, 
We're going to turn for 11 seconds and then let go for 11 seconds, right? And we're going to cut the throttle. Turn. Three. Four. Okay. And then we're going to let it settle for 11 seconds. And then I'm going to toggle the ASAS so that it resets at roughly the 90 degree point. Okay. And then I'm going to let that settle for another 15 seconds or so, and then I'm going to stage, right? Hopefully that will put me in roughly the right orientation, right? So... Stage. Okay, so hopefully we're pointing the right way. Now, we will need to figure out where Apoaps is, and I think I need to time accelerate for one minute, right? And... That's an approximation, so I'm going to start, and I'm, gonna, I'm counting this in my head. I'm counting, I'll get 10 seconds. I wish this music had a different beat. Time accelerate, okay. So we'll do one minute of time accelerate, and I'm beating this in my hand, haven't I? You know, house music. Traditionally, kind of house music has been about 120 beats per minute, which is like two beats per second. That uh, is kind of historical. That's the kind of natural frequency the body moves at. And so, you know, I get very good being a DJ, recognizing these tempos and figuring out roughly where they were. If you've seen my asteroid discovery video, you might notice the music in that lines up with the pulsing of the discovery. And that's because the music is at 60 beats per minute, and the discovery is beating once every uh, or twice a month because it's full moon, no moon, full moon. So it lines up perfectly. Okay, 10 seconds to go. <sighs> I get it. <sighs> okay, so we must be getting pretty close. So I'm going to throttle up. And then start firing my engines uh, in a few seconds. I'm going to fire it for two minutes. Two minutes should be give me enough velocity to put myself into probably an elliptical orbit. It depends on how high I've got. Three, two, one, mark. Okay, two minutes. Two minutes during which the hands are not doing anything. So we pretty much have to trust that I'm doing the right thing here. I could be crashing for all I know. I don't know. <laughs> Once again, you know, we could take a look around. There are no, nothing here. There's just the keyboard. No monitors, nothing hidden over there, nothing over there. No, no thing over there that I'm watching. This is no trick. This is all, you know, me doing stuff. By following a program, that's what it is. It literally is a program. And if you think about it, the guys on Apollo 13, they had, uh, they were getting sent orders, you know, fire the engine, this orientation for this amount of time, right? They had a plan and they had approximate ways to do it, but they totally were trusting the guys at Mission Control that they actually had a thing. So that's one minute, by the way. We're halfway through this burn, and I need to make sure I press X to cancel the burn. I think this might be slightly longer than I need, but hopefully we will end up in something approximating an orbit, right? Because uh, it would be embarrassing if it didn't. After going go to all this trouble and uh, not getting into orbit, I mean, the moment of truth will come, and I will be either chastised or impressed with myself, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, so here's the thing, the the Japanese actually built a rocket that managed to get itself into, put a satellite in orbit, and it was passively guided. It ran a program, it didn't use, a, you know, a bunch of electronic guidance, it was just well designed so that it would carefully get things into orbit without anything other than a simple timer. Ten seconds. It's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Cut. Okay. I think we might be in orbit. You guys already know, right? But I don't. I, I'm going to turn these on and find out. Let's see how we did. Oh, there we go. 
terrible monitors. I'm going to get a better monitor soon. But uh, this one is this one has terrible. You see, it's bright. This one. Okay, so we we still have no info here. Do I look like I'm in orbit? Let's bring this up. I still have fuel left. Ah, okay, I get pretty close to the horizon on that uh, nav ball. Let's see. Whoa, 160. Oh wow, look at that. There we go. 160 by. Uh, 3,000. 3, I totally got into orbit entirely uh, without without any instrumentation at all. I could have done it blindfold, right? I could have done it blindfold, but then you wouldn't have had me to look at it. Um, you know, I wouldn't be allowed to wave my arms and, you know, do these kind of, hey, Italian talking to you. Ah, no, that's terrible. I, if you're Italian, I don't mean anything by that. I mean, you know, you're awesome people. Yeah, so getting into orbit, it's a... Uh, Easy, you don't even need instrumentation, huh? <laughs> I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.